بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is our third session today and in our previous sessions we've been discussing important مسائل and important aspects pertaining to intimacy In our last setting, we spoke about the fact that intimacy is a right of the husband as well as the wife. It is a misconception to think that only the husband has the right to sexual gratification. We also spoke about the fact that this is the only permissible outlet for husband and wife to fulfill their needs. And if a person does not provide for that, if he does not provide for a halal environment for his or her partner, then the temptation grows very strong to look outside. We move on today to some other aspects pertaining to intimacy. The first one is how often? The Sharia does not stipulate any specific amount. It all depends on the physique, the temperament, the energy, the strength of a couple. And this would vary from couple to couple. Therefore, the Sharia does not impose any amount or any restrictions in this regard. It leads to the couple discussing this and coming to a mutual understanding as to how often they should engage in sexual intimacy. Having said that, one should avoid the two extremes. The one extreme is there's no action. And the other extreme is the person wants to be active every single day, which is just not possible for some people. Therefore, both husband and wife needs to sit down together and understand each other's needs. That okay, maybe not every day is possible, and maybe once in a blue moon is also not possible. Let's see how we can meet each other in the middle and see where we can work out our routine and how we can fulfill our needs in a halal way. So the key point is discussion, mutual discussion, talk to one another. And this is one of the subjects that couples don't touch. They feel it's a taboo topic. No, you mustn't talk about these things, Malana, you know. It just happens. So you must be frank about it. Some, sometimes a wife will say, when we're doing marital counseling, but Malana, he never ever told me. He never ever communicated his needs to me. I thought... Once in a while he's fine and he's happy and we're happy and we carrying on. If he had to communicate his needs to me, I would not be in the dark. I would have tried harder. And like sometimes it's the other way around. The second thing to understand is that what time? Also in terms of time, uh, there's no restriction. It can be any time of the day, any time of the night. Here again you have to look at the mood of your partner, You got to see the circumstances. It can't be that it's broad daylight and the children are playing in the house and uh, you want to become intimate. I'm not saying it can't happen, but at least take into account these factors. You have to work out how you're going to do it. So the time factor also, the Sharia doesn't impose any restrictions. A person is free at any time of the day or any time of the night. As long as there's no external factors that prohibit the partners getting intimate and which we will get to in a bit insha'Allah. So as far as how often, as far as the frequency is concerned, no restrictions. As far as which time of the day, no restrictions. What we do glean from the sunnah is that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that the Nabi of Allah would spend the night, he would divide his nights into different portions where he would sleep, where he would wake up, read tahajjud. And then towards the end of the night, after completing his ibadah, She says, if the Prophet of Allah had a need, he would come and fulfill his need. So from here, the, the scholars deduce a number of points. One is that at this time of the night, you are fully rested. And that means your energy is at optimum level, number one. Number two, the, the scholars write that at this point of the night, your food has also digested. So there's no in, uh, inhibitors, there's no impediments. Number three, the scholars also write that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been amazing. Just moments before this, he was communicating with his Lord 
which you can say is a climax in terms of ibadah and your connection with Allah. Yet on the other side, he does not forget his needs with his wife. Subhanallah. This is called balance. This is called balance. And this is the balance we often lose. We attempt to think that we are extremely pious and we think that these needs are then suppressed. The Sharia is extremely pragmatic, extremely practical. It doesn't deny your spiritual needs. It doesn't deny your physical needs. Subhanallah. What a beautiful religion Allah has blessed us with. Now also we look at some other miscellaneous aspects. For example, I said no external factor should be there to prohibit the actual intimacy or the encounter. Um, very often people ask Mulana, if my wife is pregnant seven months, six months, eight months, can we have relations? So a Sahabi came to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Inni a'azilu an imra'ati. O Nabi of Allah, I have separated our sleeping places. I don't come close to my wife and I don't get intimate with her. So the Nabi of Allah asked him, Lima taf'alu dhalik? Why do you do so? So the Sahabi gave the explanation, فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ أُشْفِقُ عَلَى وَلَدِهَا أَوْ عَلَى أَوْلَادِهَا So he said, O oh, Nabi of Allah, you know, I'm taking into account my wife is pregnant and she's going to be you know, giving birth in a month or two, so I don't want to make it complicated for her. So the Nabi of Allah replied to him, لَوْ كَانَ ذَلِكَ ضَارًا ضَرَّ فَارِسَ وَالرُّومُ If that was the case, my Sahabi, then this practice would have harmed the children of the Persians and the Romans. Meaning there were two civilizations in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. One was the Romans and one was the Persians. They were the dominant forces of the time. And the Nabi of Allah is saying, experience has it that these people are intimate with their partners even during the pregnancy period and even towards the end. And we haven't witnessed any complications on the mother's side or on the child's uh, part. Therefore, from experience, we can say that there's no impediments. You can still have relations with your partner. The other aspect is that relations during breastfeeding period. So the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَقَدْ هَمَمْتُ أَنْ أَنْهَا عَنِ الْغِيلَةِ حَتَّى ذَكَرْتُ أَنَّ الرُّومَ وَفَارِسَ يَصْنَعُونَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَضُرُّ أَوْلَادَهُمْ um, he said, I intended to make intimacy haram for my ummah whilst the wife is in her breastfeeding period. But then he said, I looked at the Persians and the Romans again and I saw that they are breastfeeding their children and the husbands are becoming intimate with their wives and from experience we see nothing wrong happening. Therefore, the Nabi of Allah said, it is permissible for you to even have relations once your wife has completed her nifas, her postnatal bleeding, you are allowed to have intimate relations with your partner. Moving on further, sexual relations during menstruation is haram. It's not permissible. The Quran categorically mentions, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيضِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَطْهُرْنْ the Quran says that, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions are asking you, what is the ruling regarding women folk when they are in their menses? So Allah sent down revelation, قُلْ هُوَ أَذَنْ فَاعْتَزِلُ nisa. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advise your companions, it is not permissible for them to become intimate with their partners whilst their women folk are going through their menses. So it's a categoric injunction of the Qur'an, therefore it is haram, not even makruh, it is haram for a person to get intimate, intimate in a sense where the actual act takes place whilst your wife is menstruating. To the extent that the ulama write that if a person engages in sexual intimacy intentionally by disregarding this law of Allah, according to ulama, he even becomes a kafir. So one is a person who happened to end up doing the act where he couldn't control himself. But he's regretful, he's remorseful. He is aware that what he has done is wrong. So for that person, for him is Tawbah. But for the person who says, Ah man, no, you know what? You don't have to worry about this ruling. There's no need to follow this injunction. We're going to carry on with what we want then that leads you to the border of kufr. And in certain cases, ulama say it's even kufr itself. 
because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man ata ha'idhan aw imra'atan fi duburiha aw kahinan faqad kafara bima anzal Allah ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who uh, has relations with his wife while she is in her menses or enters from the rear or goes to a fortune teller, he has indeed made kufr for that which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has come with. Now, if a person happened to cross the boundaries and he had relations, and the ulama mentions that he should do two things. One is he should make sincere tawbah. And number two, he should give sadaqah. فَلْيَتَصَدَّقْ بِنِسْفِ دِينَارٍ He should give out some sadaqah some charity as an atonement for the sin. But do not disregard the sin. Do not disregard the sin and ah, you know, it's not serious. That is the worst state to be in as far as Iman is concerned. May Allah protect us all. Now as far as intimacy is concerned, we must understand that it is permissible for a husband to be intimate with his wife in certain aspects but not in certain aspects while she is in her haid for example Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says kana ihdana idha kanat ha'idhan amaraha rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fal ta'tazir bi izarin thumma yubashirwaha the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say to us meaning one of us referring to the wives that when we are in our menses the Nabi of Allah would say that cover the portion from the navel till below the knees with a cloth, with some barrier. And then he would get intimate with us. So here is a ruling that the ulama deduced from this hadith that it is permissible for the husband and wife to be intimate, but it is not permissible to, for the actual penetration to take place. So if, for example, there's some barrier that is there, between the person and the partner, then a person can still derive pleasure from above the navel and below the knees. It's totally fine. Nothing wrong at all. Now this is the benefit of learning all these masail so you're not in the dark. So it is totally permissible for you to do so. As long as there's a barrier. If there's no barrier, then obviously you are going to end up doing the actual deed and that's where the problem lies. The next thing is that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has given us certain guidelines as far as haid is concerned. For example, if a lady has a cycle of 10 days and her period ends on the 10th day, it is permissible for the husband and wife to get intimate and have actual relations even though she has not made ghusl. It's permissible. But this is for a lady who completes her 10 days complete. If a lady, for example, scenario number two, a lady has a cycle of seven days and her bleeding stops on the seventh day, it is not permissible for them to become intimate until a lady takes the ghusl. Or one salah time passes and it becomes qada upon her. Then they can become intimate. So scenario number two is a lady has a set cycle every month six days or every month seven days. On the seventh day when the cycle ends, you can't get intimate until your wife does not take a ghusl, a farz ghusl. Then only you can become intimate with her. If you don't want her to take a ghusl, then you must tell her she has to wait for one salah time to pass. And when that salah becomes a debt upon her, it becomes permissible for you to have relations. Scenario number three is a lady has a set cycle of seven days. But this month, for some reason, the bleeding stopped on the fifth day. It stopped completely. She will take a ghusl, but you can't have relations. You can't have relations with her until the seventh day does not end. Because her normal cycle is how many days? Seven days. Because it's a precautionary measure that maybe she'll bleed again on the sixth day. Or maybe she'll bleed again on the seventh day. We're not sure. Therefore, the precautionary measure is that she must take a ghusl, continue with her salah, but intimacy will only be permissible after the seventh day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. We'll continue next time, inshallah, from this point. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.